Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have a, another set of dev blogs that naturally have to record the previous dev blog video. We have another set come out because that's how Wargaming likes to do things, apparently. And there's some very interesting changes in these dev blogs, and especially around one particular ship in testing that I don't think Wargaming really knows what the heck they want to do with this ship. Uh, clearly not from the changes that are happening in this uh, dev blog to it. And the announcement of Tashkit 41, an earlier version of everyone's favorite Tier 9 Soviet DD, the Tashkit. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it. If you want to read along as I read aloud, link to these dev blogs are in the description down below. I'll throw up any relevant images or artwork of these blogs as we go through them. As always, if you guys do like the video, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment down below. It does help out quite a bit in the algorithm. All right, so going in the order of release. So, change to test ships, close testing 12.0. Based on testing results, we're applying changes to Pan American Cruisers, the, the Nebraska, Duple, Ninghai, Hector, and Brisbane. Small fixes are also being made to some other test ships. So the Pan American Cruisers, they're changing the combat instructions parameters. They first note idle time before the combat instructions meter begins to deplete. Has been increased from 6 to 10 seconds. Rate at which the combat instructions meter depletes after a period of inactivity has been decreased one tick per second to one tick every two seconds. That's interesting because they recently, in the big shift with the Pan American cruisers, they made the combat instructions much easier to uh, trigger. You don't have to get X amount of hits per salvo now. It's just X amount of hits, I believe. And then now they're making it to where the combat instructions last... 10 seconds before they start to deplete between salvos and they go down one tick every two seconds now. Interesting stuff. Uh, again, the Pan American Cruises just saw a big identity shift, so that's not surprising here that they're still uh, working on them. So, uh, the Cor uh, Coronel Bolognese, which is the Tier 7 Pan American Cruiser, uh, combat instruction parameters changed for the whole A module, action time reduced 60 to 30 seconds. Mile of total combat instructions meter capacity lost per tick after a period of inactivity increased 8% per tick to 25% per tick. Okay. The Nebraska, which is the Tier 8 American hybrid battleship. This one only has, I believe, the... Um, yeah, this one has six guns in the front. I believe the Tier 9 has a turret in the back. And then the Tier 10 has the ultra-wide quad turret, the, uh, the Louisiana. All right. So, main battery reload time increased 27 to 30 seconds. That's interesting, because she only has six guns. That's, um, hmm. That means that the flights the flights must be packing one hell of a punch there. The bomber squadrons. Because I would figure, you know, only having six guns at tier 8, unless they're like, you know, the, um, oh, I, I was just playing in the stream, the tier 8 uh, Soviet battleship. The, uh, Borodino, where she has the Sovetsky Soyuz's guns, which of course hit very hard and have the Soviet parameters and such, but with the uh, American guns, I wouldn't think that would warrant a 30 second reload time on just six of them. Um, maybe the accuracy got dialed up in testing, but okay, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, the Duplay, which is the tier 6 French cruiser that has actual armor, uh, main batting firing range reduced 15.5 to 15 kilometers. Pan Asian Cruise in Ninghai, which is the Tier 3. Main battery firing range reduced from 13.7 to 12.7. The Hector, which is the Commonwealth Cruiser at Tier 9. Detectability range by sea increased 10.5 to 11.6. Detectability range after firing the main battery and smoke screen 4.6 to 5.3. Hydroacoustic search consumable replaced with short range hydro, similar to one present on British destroyers. Okay. Not. Small changes to Hector, but nothing big. And here comes the the actual, like, just, huh? section. Brisbane. So, Brisbane got nerfed pretty hard, and they tweaked her a little bit more toward the uh, decent side in the last changes. But now, listen to this, guys. Main battery reload time reduced 6 to 5 seconds. That's a whole second change. 
So then it's radar consumable action time reduced from 40 to 20 seconds. So you can see where this is going. Civilian's radar consumable ship detection range increased from 10 to 12 kilometers. Detectability range by sea increased from 11.5 to 12.1 kilometers. And your smoke screen, your smoke uh, firing penalty is now 5.6 to 6.1. So they just gave it Soviet radar and it can stealth radar now. I mean, it could obviously stealth radar quite a bit beforehand, but um, now it's just, jeez. So, I don't think they know what they want to do with the Brisbane. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess they thought it was getting too minotaur so they, they changed it to the Soviet radar. Um, and six to five seconds on the reload time. That's a big buff. Um, if you guys don't know, normally changes in like the half a second range are considered pretty decently sized but a whole second reload buff is, is pretty significant even on a battleship now that's why i was thinking about the nebraska you know 27 seconds to 30 seconds that's a three second nerf to the nebraska's reload time so that means that the bomber squadron must be really putting in the work there but yeah this is i i don't know if they know what they want out of this ship um again maybe they're trying to just make it that much different from the minotaur now she does have he so i mean i don't think that'd be different enough but i guess not um but yes she can now stealth radar so the soviet ships that have that 12 kilometer radar most of the time they're going to be spotted when they use it because they're, they're very large cruisers they have terrible detection ranges so you can see them coming a mile away but now this guy has the ability, because again, 12.1 kilometer concealment, throw the commander build on there and the modules. I'm going to get that down pretty pretty well, probably I would imagine 10, maybe 9? Um, we'll see. I would imagine probably around 10-ish. So, yeah, this is, this ship's going to be something, alright? But given how much she's gone through already in terms of changes, she might get changed a bit more before her final release but okay i'm still very excited for the brisbane um i hope whatever they do with her she does come out in a good state but we will see all right on to the tashkent 41 so if you guys don't know the tashkent unlike a lot of ships in the soviet tech tree uh, she's real she, she is a real still historical ship she was built in Italy in, uh, shoot, I believe, well, she, she was finished right before the war started, and she went through, well, quite a few, obviously, updates during the war, and the one that we have in-game is, I believe, a, it's either a hypothetical post-war uh, refit of the ship, or a later war refit of the ship, so... Yeah, so she, she was around for a minute. She was sunk, then refloated, uh, and then I believe she was too badly damaged. She, she got attacked by um, German bombers, I believe, two or three times. So, yeah, she went through it, and she was too damaged after the war to be uh, recovered. So they scrapped her, unfortunately, for history's sake. All right, so this is obviously a much earlier version of the ship, but it's quite different. A destroyer leader designed and built at the Ordero Teneri Orlando shipyard in Livorno, Italy, as part of an order placed by the Soviet Navy. She was initially equipped with three 130mm B-13 gun mounts, which historically remained aboard the ship until July 1941. Despite the differences in the composition of its main battery, Tashkent 41 shares many similarities with its researchable Tier 9 analog, high speed, high HP for a tier, limited maneuverability. Strictly in terms of gameplay, however, there are marked differences between the two variants of the ship. Tashkent 41 is primarily a torpedo-centric destroyer thanks to the long range of her 9 torpedo tubes and access to the torpedo reload booster consumable. The new ship also lacks the smoke generator and repair party consumables. Detailed parameters of the ship are currently in development and will be announced later. So, a torpedo-based Tashkent. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. It sounds interesting uh, because normally when they do this, oh, here's an earlier version of the ship. It plays fairly similar to the original ship in you know, like West Virginia and Colorado. Um, renowned and, well, Renowned 44 is a later version of the ship, but it still plays similar, but 
Renown 44 is a lot better than Renown. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it to review, obviously, but I'm not sure if this will be one that I play too much, because I'm not really into torpedo boats just yet. I've, I I played a lot of Tashkent, because I love that ship, you know, run and gun ship, it's a fantastic boat in my opinion, really fun one to play, it might be a nice segue into torpedo boats for me, but, you know, her HP is a word I'm wondering about right now, because if she does have the same HP as her tier 9 version, which I doubt she will have that much HP, that's going to be quite a chunky boat at tier 7. I imagine they'll probably shave a few thousand off, and obviously she doesn't have a repair party to fall back on so it's an interesting concept i will watch its development with much interest and we'll see what happens um i don't know i'm kind of getting a free ship vibe from this ship too some event might be coming up that they need a, a free giveaway ship for and i'm kind of getting that vibe from this ship so let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below and the rest of these two dev blogs as well hope you guys are having a wonderful saturday if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment down below. And hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday, wonderful rest of your long weekend for my fellow Americans. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.